Hey everyone, today we're going to get into how to use Kronos Builder, the TTRPG 3D map making program. If this is your first time coming to the channel, I want to welcome you to RPG Elite. This is the place, folks, where we put the RP back into RPG for tabletop RPGs. We give you tools, we give you tips, we give you tutorials, and we give you real talk about the tabletop RPG space. Now, the last time that we got into this, it was on the beta reveal and we kind of discovered it together because I hadn't done anything except download the program. And when I opened it up, that was the first time I'd ever seen it with you guys. Well, today we're going to go a little bit under the hood. I've had a little bit of time in the interim. We're going to start a tutorial series starting today. And this is beta, by the way. So keep that in mind. It's not a full fledged tutorial because all of the features don't even work. But of the things that we have available, we're going to get into it and we're, I'll let you know when things change and as they change until the official release. So let's get into it, folks. It's going to be part one of our Kronos Builder tutorial series. See you on the other side. Okay, so here we are in the Kronos Builder startup window. We're going to go through these really quick on these huge icons that we got here. So new is self-explanatory. It's when you want to make a new map. Load is when you want to work on one that you are currently creating options. We're going to click on this real quick. So options uh, you have for the display, very simple. You have different kinds of options for your display. I, even if you are going up to the kind of high def displays, right? Um, 1920 by 1080 is kind of like the standard per se. And so you've got different your different options here for your resolution. You have different options for your quality, which is just low, medium and high. You have your windowed or you have your full screen mode. I'm in full screen mode right now, and that's how I like to keep it. And sound here, the only one that is not working over here is the music. So the music that you're hearing right now is not the music that comes with Kronos Builder, but it is the music that I added after the fact. And once you're done here, you can just click on apply over here and it will apply all of your settings. Account. Now, I'm not exactly sure, but from the research that I've done, it appears that Kronos Builder creators are going to be able to share their creations with other Kronos Builder owners. This is going to be dope. So if somebody has a room or a grouping or things like that, you will be able to share it. And I'm going to guess that that is what that is about, which would be off of the chain. I mean, if you want to talk about being able to make maps fast and be able to do that without actually having to do almost all the work, but sharing across a, an account, man, that would be that would be great. And then you have exit and that's self-explanatory get on out of the program but we're not going to do that we're going to get into the program by pressing new and creating a new map so let's do it all right here we are and it's opened up our global options which it does automatically very convenient by the way so the first thing we're going to do is name our map now since we have a series of gamma world videos we're going to make a map for that one shot that is going to be coming up here real soon. And we're going to be making it for a restorationist settlement that our characters, which I have been using in our latest videos on Gamma World. So you can go and check them out. But it's Zeeland Maylock and Mirabaldo Kentok. So they are a part of of this restorationist settlement. We're gonna say that. And this is what's called the center. So let's go ahead and let's put the name in there. Push all. All right. Next, we're gonna give it a description. And this is gonna be the place where the restorationists reside and live and meet. So, you're going to put that in there. Good enough. 
Now, we're going to go down to the tags. Now, these, trust me on this, are important. When you start building up a library of maps, it's going to be important to be able to just kind of look through the maps that you want to upload or load instead of having to scroll through them because this stuff will probably get real cluttered real fast especially if you're running a regular campaign so tags will help you to whittle things down in terms of the maps that you actually want to look at so we're going to say um well see they don't really have anything so i'm going to put this as a town let's let's just a town it's not really a town it's more like a building in the town but since we don't really have anything we're just going to pick town and then we're going to add it as one of its tags we can come back and tag it later here you have a preview you know you click on the previews to see what it is which is absolutely nothing at the moment so we're going to get this grid going here and i'm going to add i'm going to put 24 here so you can change your grid size and then you click generate and it's going to change it here and then you can click preview again to see and it'll change it there the surface um you have several surfaces here and they will probably add more surfaces here than the few that we have here in beta and just don't forget this is beta so we're not going to have like a full fledged it's not that i'm going to show you what we have so far so let's go ahead with rubble i'm gonna go ahead with rubble all right let's go do the sky options and our sky options are only two at the moment daytime and sci-fi uh, let me just show you what sci-fi is okay let's go back to daytime because that's what we're going to use because we're not in space here um and i'm sure that they're going to have more options there as well as we move on let's go with the sun and its position i'm going to keep it at noon however i have a particular code here for this so i'm going to put it in here all right and it's a it's a slightly tintish bluish tintish that i have and then this last one is the intensity of it i'm gonna add it to just a 0.4 intensity there all right so now is the time to save the map i'm just gonna save the map as its name so i'm gonna just save the map map saved successfully great all right, so this is what we have so far. So this is the grid that we are going to use. But before we get to that, it will be good to kind of know how in the world do you move around in this? What are the controls? So let's look at the controls. So the first thing you're going to use is your scroll wheel. And the scroll wheel is going to give you a soft zoom. So this is a slow zoom. So if you're using it, you can go in very slowly. And then you can move back just as slow. Now, if you press and hold the scroll wheel, you can move the whole map. So if you do, you can do one of these things. The right and left arrow on your keyboard is going to move you from side to side. And your up and down arrows are going to move you forward and back. Now, since we are at an angle, because we're in a particular view called the perspective view, it's going to move me up and down. So it's going to move me in and it's going to move me out. Now, if I want to level that off so I can just go forward and back, I'm going to have to press and hold the right mouse button. And then I can move my mouse so where it's I got it even on the skyline here and it'll just move me forward. I still must be at an angle keep going and it's still can still kind of move me forward down let me see there we go move me forward and back on that one okay so i'm going to just look down though because that actually is what i want 
And also, as you press and hold the right mouse button, you can turn. So let's look at the menus here. So you have basically kind of three things, four things actually, as far as your menus. So you have this here. So this is your menu, it's kind of similar. This is your settings as it was before. This is your global options. This here is your exporting. So when you're ready to use this bad boy in your virtual tabletop or in your live session, you can do it here. This here is going to be the save feature. So you should be doing that like a lot as you're working on it. This one here is going to be your load feature. So if you want to load a new map and work on that, this will be your exit. And this one here is one that I like to use quite a bit. The eye that you see here, here, and down here at the bottom, that is going to collapse your menu so you can get more of your real estate as you're working on your map. So this one is the main collapse. It collapses all three of them at the same time. So if I just wanted to see everything on my map, I just use that one over there and it's gonna allow me to see that. However, let's say, hey, I need my, you know, I need my menu down here so I can start doing stuff. So I'll just uncollapse this menu and this will stay collapsed and the top will stay collapsed. Now there is a top menu as well and it, it automatically hides and I just love that. So if you just go up and mouse over, you can see the menu here. And I just love the fact that it just automatically hides. So you're just getting more of your display real estate as you're working on your maps. Now I'm going to get to camera views here in a second, but first I like to go through the menu options that we have down here at the bottom. Now you can have your menu window here in three different modes. So right now it's what's in what's called the collapsed mode or what I would like to call the compressed mode. And this is what I like to use. I like to use this mode in the way this looks here. You can also use the expanded mode and just use it like this. But of course it takes up half of your screen if you do that. And then you can use what's called the dynamic mode. Not real sure about why this is there, but you know, maybe there's some people who like this, but as you, you know, go through things, it will begin to expand dynamically as you go through things. Uh, but like I said, I like to work here in my uh, collapsed mode. Uh, just think that it is better. Now, next on the list here is search. This is a big deal. This is a really big deal. As they expand all of the assets in the game, you're going to want to have certain things or play certain things as you're using certain maps. And instead of searching through all of the assets, it's a whole lot easier just to go ahead and search through different kinds of assets. Now, they just added a cyberpunk asset pack. So we've got some new things here. You can see some of the new things that they've added here. This is part of the cyberpunk asset pack. You have the guitars down here. You have the door lights here. You have the signs. And they've added about over two hundred new assets for us who have the beta and you know if they're going to keep coming out with assets then this thing is going to get way up there in terms of the amount of assets so it is better to use the search term and learn how to use it now their search is pretty great let's say i just wanted to search for a chair that i wanted to place inside of a structure then all i have to do is do a partial search c-h-a and look, anything that has CHA in it is going to pull it up. So these are all the chairs that I'm able to use at the moment. If I wanted to use, look for a table, then just put in TAB, and there you go. If I put in an L, I'll have that. So this is basically is all of the tables here that are currently in beta. And that will just make life so simple. Now, let's say you're making a certain category of a room or something like, let's say, a kitchen. And so you want to pull up all of the things that you can place inside of a kitchen. So you can just click on kitchen and it's going to pull up all of those things. If you wanted to do like a dorm, it does the same thing. You can click dorm and it'll pull up all of those things. 
If you want to go back to kitchen, you can click it down here or up here. doesn't really matter. If you want to do a lab, same thing. It will put up all the things in a lab. Now, this looks like it's more like a library type of deal or maybe an old lab, like an alchemist lab. That's what it looks like. And you can just get rid of all of it and pull them all up by just clicking down here below on this little small X. Now, next on the menu is terraforming and the terrain. Now, in the beta, we cannot use this. So this is not it's not possible to use right now. However, we are getting a glimpse here of what's coming down the pike. So I am looking forward to seeing how this will work. But that is part of the menu. I'm going to skip over here and I'm going to open this up for this right here. And I'm going to skip to effects and the effects are going to allow you to edit the effects of certain objects. So I'm going to guess things like torches and flickering flame and things like that. You're going to be able to edit, which would be kind of cool if you'll be able to, you know, change like the color of them and things like that. That's not all objects, just certain objects down here. You have the camera view and uh, you can or the camera mode, I should say. And this will allow you to move the camera in any way that you want. Now, that is important because with the controls, with the way that they're set right now, you kind of have to get used to it. Now, a lot of times you have to do the same thing in a video game, right? But you are allowed the option to change them to the way that you would want to have the controls. Now, we don't have that right now in beta, but apparently they're coming down the pike and that's dope. Now, this last one here, or it's not the last one, but this next one here is group mode. And this is what makes me think that th this is what accounts is for. It says you can create groups of objects and use other users groups too. Now, how will you be able to use others groups if you don't have access to it unless you can do that through accounts? That is what makes me think that that is what the accounts is for. And that is something that is going to be so dope because you want to talk about fast map making. If somebody else has made a room and everybody's like, oh, yo, that's dope. I'm going to use that one and just take that and put it on their map as a group. And you can group. You'll be able to group a whole lot of things. So a room or the props or probably all the room and all the props that will be very very cool and the last thing we have here is the automatic mode or what i call the auto creation tool we're getting ready to get to that in a second all right yeah i know i kind of left you hanging there at the end because it's going to be a long minute <laughs> that's going to be a long minute but hey it's not going to be a week or two this is going to be one of those weeks where i come out with three videos because normally you know it i come out with videos on tuesdays and fridays but this week you're going to get an extra one not real sure which day i'm going to come out with it so make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so you'll know exactly when i come out with that extra video for this week well that is going to do it for me folks I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, smash the like button. But until the next time, hey, if you got a game this week, happy gaming. Hope it's a wonderful RPG Elite session. But until the next time, folks, a brother has just got stuff. Peace. No hair grease. Have a good one.